Dear, dear most loving and kind Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of being here in person and be able to uh, present uh, these things uh, that I have to the people here. And please uh, uh, speak through me so I can give a clear message and that people can understand what I'm trying to say and also that it may help them uh, to decide what what they are doing in regard to this pandemic. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, there, um, there is a uh, YouTube video that I found that call, that's called uh, The Vaccines awesome ingenuity or a big mistake. And there was a Dr. Chris Martinson who was interviewing a Dr. Gret Vanden Boski. Now the Dr. Martinson is not a uh, medical doctor. He is a PhD economic research uh, uh, person. Uh, and this uh, Dr. Greet uh, Vanden Boschke is actually a doctor of veterinary medicine and a virologist. He has uh, the D, uh, doctor of veterinary medicine and also a PhD degree as a virologist. And uh, see, is this? This was my, oops, no, it's not. Oh, I don't know why it's marking it, okay. This this looked like it started out the wrong slide here. Let me just uh, get back here. To, uh, it started slide two, sorry. I, I, I need to get on slide one, sorry. I'll get there. Now we're on slide, now we're on slide one. Hold on, there we go. Okay, now. Uh, the, this is uh, what he, um, he received his uh, uh, doctor of veterinary medicine from the University of uh, uh, Hent, or Gent in Belgium and his PhD in virology from the University of Hoheim in Germany. And he, he's held adjunct faculty appointments at universities in Belgium and Germany and after the, uh, his career acad in ag academica, uh, he joined several vaccine companies and they're listed here uh, to serve in various roles in the research and development as well as in the late vaccine development. And he also moved, uh, he had been with uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, and all, as a senior program officer. And then he worked uh, with a global alliance for vaccines and immunizations in Geneva as a senior e Ebola program manager. And then he uh, tracked several uh, efforts to develop an Ebola vaccine and also represented uh, this uh, Gavi company and uh, for a, with other partners, including H, uh, WHO and review progress on the fight against Ebola and building plans for global pandemic um, preparedness. And then in 2015, he scrutinized questions on the safety of the Ebola vaccine that was used in ring vaccination trials conducted by WHO in uh, Guyana. Guiana, and his critical scientific analysis and report on the data was published in uh, WHO in the Lancet in 2015, uh, and he was sent all over, sent to all international health and regulatory authorities involved in the Ebola vaccine program. And after working with Gavi, uh, he joined the German Center for Infection Research in Cologne as head of the vaccine development office. He, he is at present uh, primary serving as biotech 
uh, vaccine consultant while also conducting his own research on natural killer cell-based vaccines. And he, he addresses the variants uh, of uh, the uh, current, uh, that, that resulted from the current vaccination uh, program for COVID-19. And uh, he, this is some quotes that, he, that I'm recording, or I put down here, uh, that he gave to this Dr. Uh, Martinson. And uh, he quotes, the problem is when you vaccinate in the midst of a pandemic and you do mass vaccination, the problem he's talking about is variants, the production of variants. Uh, and that, he says, that occurs in the midst of a pandemic when you're doing mass vaccination. And it's an, it was an expected thing. I mean, he, even before they developed the uh, vaccines, he, he uh, tried to tell them that this was going to happen, but they weren't uh, going to listen to him. On the other hand uh, side, you, he says, you are of course diminishing when you do this, when, you, when in the midst of a pandemic and do mass vaccination, you are diminishing the viral transmission because you are mounting antibodies and those antibodies neutralize the virus. You're, you're producing antibodies to the vaccine, which is not a complete vaccine. It's only to the spike protein. It's not to the complete molecule of the virus. And, and, and those antibodies are, will neutralize the virus or, the, or what, uh, the, or the virus particle. And at the same time, you're being exposed to uh, the virus uh, and, and also your body's trying to uh, produce antibodies to the naturally to the uh, virus itself. And this sort of scenario puts a pressure on the virus to do immune selection pressure. In other words, it's causing the virus to produce variants. And the recent variant that we're dealing with now is the Delta variant, and the recent News says that it, the viral loads, when people come down with this Delta virus, it's over a thousand times higher than previous uh, variants. And, it's, and he's quoted, quoting here, if you vaccinate with a global vaccine campaign, you are vaccinating millions and millions of people and they are mounting antibodies while they are already exposed to the virus. So there is plenty of opportunity for the virus to escape from the immune response generated. In other words, the virus is trying to get around the, the uh, the spike protein that you vaccinated people with and what it's trying to do is get around that so it still can operate uh, through a variant. Then, uh, then he talks about herd immunity. And you've probably heard that in the news, but he explains exactly what is herd immunity. Herd immunity means that by immunizing a large amount of people in a population, uh, you will automatically protect people who are not immunized because you will have an impact on the transmission of the virus and you will diminish the viral load and by doing so that will protect people who are not immunized. But uh, of course, he, he's going to be pointing out that you cannot reach herd immunity with the present uh, vaccines because they're, they, because it's not to the complete virus, it's only to the spike protein or a portion of the virus, then you get these variants. And, and with that, you're not gonna reach herd immunity 
despite what the CDC or uh, a Dr. Fauci states, you're not going to reach herd immunity. He says, but here we are basically promoting the propagation of variants and those shed by the, vac the ones that have been vac vaccinated are now the source of infection for those who are not vaccinated and that is the opposite of what herd immunity is supposed to be. Uh, the, he says the vaccinated will be the main source of variant risk to everyone, the vaccinated and unvaccinated alike. It is crucial to realize that mutations and variants appear all, all the time. This virus can have a large number of mutations and means to replicate so you will have a number of variations not only in the spike protein but also in the other viral proteins of the virus. What is, what is important to realize is that now the virus is confronted with a host that is making life, his life, the host's life, that's the person uh, the, that got the virus uh, or exposed to it, is making his life difficult in the sense that he is mounting of, for example, antibodies that are a new response and you can start to naturally select some of the naturally occurring mutations, the kind of response that we are mounting naturally is very, very different from the immune response induced by the vaccine. Uh, he goes on to state the common denominator is, of course, that both, uh, that both induce antibodies to spike proteins, but the natural infection does, does many more things and is much richer and also during natural infection. When you get the natural infection, then uh, uh, you start mounting antibodies and during that time, uh, this has to do with the innate immune mechanism and the host cannot uh, be reinfected. That's when the complete process uh, to the natural uh, immune mechanism has been reached that you cannot be reinfected. And, and he quotes, he, he says, what I am saying with this is that when you are Mounting antibodies as a natural consequence of natural infection, these antibodies take time to mount, and during that time, the immune response is not optimal. So, so this would be an easy task for the virus to escape the humoral, uh, humoral uh, he response. The, the humoral response is producing antibodies because the antibodies are not optimal. The the uh, uh, because they're still, they're still being, I mean, the antibodies, uh, when you get the vaccine, just to the spike protein, they may be optimal to that, but not the whole, the whole molecule of the virus. Whoops. Um, but this is a kind of like natural innate immune mechanism that prevents the host from being reinfected immediately after the first infection. But this is, there is a suboptimal immunity because antibodies are still being pro, uh, processed in the process of being mounted. Uh, he says that is a very difficult situation from when you vaccinate somebody. When you vaccinate somebody, you are also starting start from zero. These people are going to mount antibodies, but during that time, they can very well be infected because they can be infected because they only uh, have mounted antibodies to the spike protein. They're not, amount, they don't have uh, immunity to the whole virus. During, during this time, the antibodies are suboptimal because this is not a natural infection. That, when you get a vaccine, it's not the natural infection. Uh, this is just mounting antibodies against the spike protein and what is the likelihood that during this phase he or she is going to be infected? 
the, li the likelihood is very high because we're in the midst of a pandemic. Mass vaccination is immune, is immune pressure to put on the virus by vaccinating of so many people. There is plenty of opportunity during mass uh, vaccination for the virus to infect the host uh, while the host is still having suboptimal antibodies and that makes, of course, it easy for the virus to escape to get a competitive advantage which, is, which will basically result in dominance of the variant that has the capability to circumvent the humoral response. In other words, if you're if you're getting the if you have the vaccine and then you're also uh, uh, have per, uh, have been exposed to a variant, uh, and then and then you're uh, also mounting antibodies naturally from the natural infections, uh, the the dominance of the variant actually circumvents the response to the natural infection. So that's what I was going to present to, uh, this evening is to, for people to understand uh, the variance and, and also herd immunity and what, what uh, being told in the news media or even from CDC that says that get vaccinated, get vaccinated, get vaccinated so we can have herd immunity. They will never reach herd immunity according to Dr. Gret Vanden Boschke, uh, who is an expert that, that, has, that has put his whole career of life into producing vaccines. And, and I just want people to know that. Uh, I mean, the, the Reaching herd immunity is very important for the unvaccinated. And we can take any questions anybody has, but uh, I'll try to have to uh, repeat them uh, so everybody can hear them. Is there any questions people might have? Uh, yes. Um, if a person's getting COVID, do you think that Doing hot and cold fermentations and really hitting it with a lot of stuff like that would keep it from developing further? Yes, that's been shown. Yeah, there. Okay, your question was that if a person gets the infection from uh, a COVID, uh, gets a COVID infection, uh, does hydrotherapy help uh, 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 help prevent them from being hospitalized and also going to pneumonia? Yes, we have. Uh, uh, I discussed that last year uh, in my. Uh, lectures that were virtual lectures they were sh that that's showing that yes that is true but in the when they uh, also uh, in my lectures last year uh, yes hydrotherapy helps but in the 1918 pandemic it was a whole program it was not only the hydrotherapy it was the 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 proper diet it was the exercise it was the sleep. It's all the eight natural remedies. And, and the most important remedy of the eight natural remedies is trust in divine power. Dr trust Amen. in the true God that, that, that we understand who the true God is. And, and that is the most important. Uh, the, the, the one that you can trust in, he would never lie to you, is Jesus Christ, who came here and lived among us and healed many people, and he's a great physician. Is there, uh, I mean, there's no physician today that has brought somebody back from life after their body stunk four days. And, and, if you, and if you read that chapter in Desire of Ages, it, it points to this was Christ's divinity was shown by, La by Lazarus and his divinity was showing that he was the son of the living God, not that he was a co-eternal person of the Trinity. Amen. Amen. Uh, I have two comments. Sure. Didn't 
chiropractic also play a part in the, in the pandemic of 19, 18, and 19? And, and then one more thing. My son, I think, is struggling for about a week and a half with COVID. And if we sometimes could pray for him. Okay. Her question was two. Uh, she, she asked if chiropractic care uh, came, had a play in the 1918 pandemic. And number two, she wants prayer for her son who is suffering from uh, COVID infection. Probably. Oh, oh probably. Yeah, he gets a fever every night and he's hurting. Okay. Now, I, um, there are, there are parts of uh, chiropractic care that there, there are differences between chiropractors and their care and also even MDs in their care. Not all use all na eight natural remedies. Not all MDs do that and not all chiropractors do that. But now there's chiropractic manipulation I am unaware of uh, the, the chiropractic manipulation did, uh, I may be corrected, but I, I didn't re, uh, encounter that in studying the 1918 pandemic uh, um, uh, literature, uh, but if somebody finds that information that that did play a role, I would be cor corrected. Uh, now. Now the the uh, uh, if you read Ellen White's writing, she talked about uh, we were to be hygienic care, uh, not allopathic, not osteopathic, not homopathic, but hygienic uh, uh, care. And actually, we, we were to be, we were to be specialized in non-drug care uh, when we established uh, the medical school in Loma Linda. It was supposed to be in, in non-drug care and we were to do research in regard to the uh, natural remedies. And, and of course, if you study the literature, a lot of their money came from drug companies, which, uh, which changed things. Is there any other questions you have? I have a question. Um, what does I've spoken to, to a few people that were kind of forced through work to get vaccines and uh, one person mentioned to me uh, that they went home right away and detoxed. Would that have any bearing on trying to get rid of the toxin that has just been injected? Uh, her question is that uh, at her work site there were many that were, uh, uh, so to say, forced to get the, the vaccine and after they got the vaccine uh, some of them went to do a detox. Would that detox help? Uh, I'm not acquainted with that information about detoxing after getting the vaccine, so I would not be able to answer that okay. question. Is there any, any other questions? Okay. Oh, okay, there's oh, another one. just going to remind us about praying. Yeah, I'm going to bring okay. Okay. Well, if that's if there's no other questions, then that's uh, in for today. There'll be another one tomorrow. Problem. No problem. And um, I was hid from this view, but was it Jacqueline? Was it your request for your son? What's his first name? Frank. Frank. I'd like for us all to um, remember Frank, and let's close this meeting with a prayer for Frank. Although the next meeting starts immediately, so we'll stay here. But. Um, and if there's any other special prayer requests that you have that you'd like to bring before the group or you'd just like private prayer for, we have a little prayer box over here. You can put prayer requests in it, that little cedar box over there. So please don't uh, hesitate to do that. Let's kneel. Yes, I'm sorry. My parents are on their way and they just like, you guys pray for them. 
Okay, how far away are they at this point? Do we know? Okay, they're a long way off still. So Raquel's folks are coming. We want to pray for Wally and Anna Marie too, as well as Frank at this time. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that we can come before you. And as a parent who's had a child with COVID-19, I, I know the struggle that a person can go through um, who is suffering with this, as well as the burden upon the heart of the parent as well. And to, to think of your child being sick is a hard thing. And so we want to pray that you'll be with Frank tonight. Uh, we pray that you will give him strength, health, and healing. And where possible, if he can understand and apply some of these principles of these eight laws, and I don't know his background, but we, we do ask, Father, that in every way that is consistent with your goodwill, that you can work with him as he works with you and tries to, to get better by following these great principles that you've given to us. We pray for Sister Jacqueline and any of the other family members that are concerned, that you will give them comfort and that you will give them the assurance that you have not forgotten Frank. We want to pray for Wally and Anna Marie that are traveling. We look forward to seeing them. We, uh, we thank you that the Browns got in safely. You answered our prayer for them, and we appreciate them being here. But we also want to see Wally and Anna Marie get here safe. So we pray that you will be with them as they travel and keep them awake and alert. And now we pray that you'll especially be with uh, Pastor Barlow as he breaks the bread of life to us tonight. We look forward to this with great anticipation. We pray your special blessing on him in Jesus' name.